When we think of cities, we think of places that are congested and bursting at the seams. But when you look closely, you can find loads of underutilised space. In Europe, there's 30,000 square kilometres of car parks. And in Australia, we've got loads of places in our cities that we could use for much more creative things than just parking cars. Which brings me to this place. This warehouse in industrial Port Melbourne is a typical workplace. About 20 staff across a handful of businesses. They've got the usual gear, desks, phones, photocopiers, but since late last year, they also have a garden. Everyone understands how big a car space is, so we set ourselves a little target to try and grow 150 kilos of produce out of one car space in one year. Brendan Condon is passionate about producing food in wasted city spaces. This is a super scalable solution. There are huge amounts of car spaces in cities uh, that could be transformed to urban farming. We had a chat with our staff group and we said we want to free up a couple of spaces and a number of our staff have jumped on their push bikes and uh, there's just been a huge amount of benefits from doing so. The World Health Organisation estimates that a healthy adult needs about 150 kilos of fresh produce per annum to stay healthy. And we've been growing and harvesting and weighing everything and we actually hit 150 kilos in five and a half months out of each car space. Wow. The gardens are planted with high output and high value crops, like leafy greens and luxury herds. Eileen Schultz is now in charge of the garden. She's an environmental geologist, but did her honours in indoor plants. So if you were to put a monetary value on the, uh, the amount of food that's grown in these two car spaces, what do you think that would be? So we calculated it because we've been weighing everything after we harvest it and compared to uh, leading supermarkets, we've grown six and a half thousand dollars worth of produce, which is pretty crazy in just under six months. So what happens to the food once it's harvested? Do you guys divvy it up amongst the staff here? We do that a little bit. Um, I definitely love having the fresh produce and taking it home. In summer, we were harvesting 30 kilograms every two weeks. It was way too much for all of us to take home. So we ended up donating most of it to um, Oz Harvest, who are located just around the corner, um, a food charity. And they've been distributing it to different charities. And they're having you know the freshest produce possible is a really good thing. While they're clearly achieving in the output department, the inputs to the garden are also considered. Compost is made on site using a variety of waste streams. This is the coffee chaff, and it's just the skin of the coffee beans. So all the coffee beans, when they come in, uh, they're green and they have skin on them, and then we roast them, and this comes off. You can feel it's still kind of warm from yeah, the roasting it's process. Oh, it's, so yeah. just scatter it over the yeah, top? Yeah, sure, go for it. Go for your life. <gasps> What's in your recipe for your compost lasagna? Well, I mean, we're always constantly making organic waste and um, garden waste. So a lot of it is the kitchen scraps from just like us bringing in our lunches, banana peels, whatever. And as well, we're getting stuff from the South Melbourne markets, and it's um, a lot of their fish offal, and then also just other kitchen scraps and organic waste. And it just sort of makes a really nice nutrient-rich soil. What does it mean to you to have something like this in your, what would generally be an office workplace? Mm, yeah, um, I mean, I, I love it, to be honest. It's, it's been such a great balance for me, working obviously a lot inside, behind, behind the computer at the desk being able to come out here and work in the garden. Um, it's a really nice way to sort of reconnect with nature and just sort of calm myself down whenever like, kind of I feel like I'm getting a bit stressed out or I feel like I'm just not on top of my game. I can come out here, take a phone call and just be here is really, really nice. I noticed the team have a pizza oven in the warehouse, and with all this amazing produce in the garden, I thought, what a great opportunity to cook up a bit of lunch. So, Ben, would you be happy to keep stretching out some of these pizza doughs? Yeah, I'll give it a go. How are you travelling with those bases over there, oh, Benny? Oh, mate. Excellent. Oh, Excellent. pro. Look at that. Yeah. Hey! Oh, mamma oh. mia! <laughs> So I've made that water about as salty as the sea. And I'm just going to blanch the bok choy for about 30 seconds to a minute, just so that stem softens up, because I'm worried that otherwise it wouldn't cook quick enough in the pizza oven. Oh, yeah. So I just slice that beetroot into discs about a centimetre thick and roast it in that really hot oven for about 10 or 15 minutes. And they are ready to go on a pizza. Gather round, gather round, people. It's pizza making time. 
got the makings of two different pizzas here. So we'll uh, spoon some of the passata on there and a couple of bits of the pizza, uh, the beetroot on there, some Spanish onion. And we'll finish it all off with some fresh herbs when we get it out of the oven, a couple of bits of cheese. Break that over the top. A couple of bits of the goat's curd on there as well. So that's one. Again, some of the passata on the base. We've got that thyme and the oregano in there. And we put this wilted bok choy on there, but you just want to make sure you just sort of squeeze the kind of last of that moisture out, because we don't want soggy pizzas, nothing worse. And then a little bit of the sauerkraut on there as well. Yum. I've shown you guys, now you have to make them. Maybe to drive the oven. There we go. Look at that. There you go. Dig in, yeah, I reckon. Right. Is this the best workplace in Australia? <laughs> <laughs> Who knew that beetroot was a secret ingredient from pizza? Mm. Mm -hmm. I love that growing food is finding its way into workplaces in this country. Who couldn't benefit from this? Fresh food, time outside, community building with the staff, doesn't get much better. <laughs>